Unless you're a single-celled organism, you need to make more cells. How do cells do that? Let's take a look at the life of a cell, which is made of a series of phases called the cell cycle. During the cell cycle, cells can do nothing, make stuff, or divide. The most famous of those phases is that of division, which is called mitosis. At the end of mitosis, we have two identical cells. This means the cell needs to make a second copy of everything so that it can put those copies into the new cell. Before we get into mitosis, let's look at the other phases of the cell cycle. Just because they're not as famous doesn't mean they're not as important. The first phase is called interphase. And during interphase, there are three G phases. The G stands for growth. Cells don't always have to be doing things. Sometimes they're just resting and doing their basic functions. This phase is called G0 because there's no growth happening. And during interphase, cells will go into and out of G0. But if the cells want to divide, eventually, the first step is moving into the next G phase called G1. During this phase, the cell is putting together everything it needs to make more DNA, mainly nucleotides and proteins, which are mostly enzymes. Once the cell has all this stuff together, it can move into S phase. The S stands for synthesis because this is where the cell will synthesize a copy of the DNA for the new cell. Once the cell has that copy, it's able to move into the G2 phase. Here, the cell replenishes energy stores, duplicates the organelles, and makes the proteins needed to be able to move the chromosomes in the next phase, which is mitosis. Let's do a quick check-in. If we think about what the cell needs to do to divide, we can come up with the following items. Double DNA, gather nucleotides and make enzymes, rest, and create more organelles. So pause the video for a minute and think about which phase each of these corresponds to. Press play when you think you're ready. Welcome back. Your answer should look like this. Notice the steps have to occur in a particular order. We need to amass the supplies to make the DNA before we can make the DNA. Once we're done doing that, we need to replenish energy and double the organelles. And now to the main event, mitosis, which is made up of a bunch of steps and we'll go through them one by one. It all starts at the end of interphase. The cell has all the supplies it needs to make a copy of itself, which moves us into step one. Step one is prophase, where we start super coiling to condense the DNA into chromosomes. Why? Because it's super hard to move if you don't pack first. So the DNA is getting packed into chromosomes. During this phase, the nuclear envelope dissolves and centrosomes are created, which migrate to opposite ends of the cell. These are gonna come into play in the next phase when we start to move around the chromosomes. Remember how we copied our DNA? Well, when packing, it makes sense to keep similar things together. To accomplish this, the two copies or sister chromatids are connected by a material called cohesin. The center of the copy is a special region called the kinetochore. Microtubules from the centrosomes will reach out and grab onto that kinetochore. Step two is metaphase. During metaphase, the microtubules are grabbing onto the kinetochore like a handle, and they're lining the chromosomes up down the middle of the cell. Think about it this way. If your roommate was moving out, you'd pack up the belongings and put them all in the center of the room so you could make sure that you were dividing things equally. During step three, or anaphase, the cohesin holding our chromosome copies together dissolves allowing the microtubules to pull on those kinetochores and separate the sister chromatids, breaking them in half. Going back to our roommate metaphor, remember how everything was in the center of the room? Well, now as you and Rumi divide up your stuff, you move it to opposite ends of the room where each of you has your own pile. 
This is where the sister chromatids are. They've been pulled apart to their opposite corners of the cell, effectively dividing the DNA into two equivalent piles. Step four is telophase. Now that we have equivalent piles of DNA, we just need to make them look like our original nucleus. The nuclear envelope reforms and the chromosomes decondense and spread out. You can think of it like this. You and your roommate have separated, and now that you've moved into your own place, you're going to unpack your belongings and put them away. In step five, the cytoplasm is divided in half by the cell membrane, creating two distinct cells. This phase is called cytokinesis and is often combined with telophase because they overlap a little bit in time. So if we think about it, after all these steps, you have gone from a single apartment with a roommate to where now you each have your own fully functional dwelling. Let's do a quick check-in. Which one of these phases is prophase? If you guessed E, you're correct. During prophase, the chromatin has condensed and the chromosomes should be visible. Which one of these phases is metaphase? If you guessed C, you're correct. You can remember metaphase middle because this is where the chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell before separating. Which phase is next? If you said anaphase, you're correct. You can think anaphase apart because this is when the chromosomes move apart. Last, we'd have telophase and cytokinesis. In telophase, the cell will develop a second nucleus. You can think telophase too. Then, during cytokinesis, the membrane will pinch in and separate the cell into two. There are tons of mnemonics to help you remember the order of these phases. Two of my favorite are, I passed my anatomy test, and people meet and talk. I also find it helpful to think about why each step occurs. This helps me to put them in logical order. A helpful way to put it in order is to think of our roomy moving situation. Interphase is when you and your roommate had to make copies of everything. Then you had to organize and pack it, and that happened during prophase. During metaphase, you moved all your boxes to the middle of the room, and during anaphase, you separated them into two distinct piles. In telophase, you and your roommate moved to completely separate places and unpacked your stuff. And cytokinesis is like building a wall between your separate apartments to complete the move. This is how duplexes are made. Now, cell duplication can't happen all willy-nilly. It needs to be controlled. In fact, when it isn't in control, you can end up with things like tumors. So how do cells know when it's okay to replicate and how do they make sure that this happens properly? First, cells need to get a signal to divide. A common signal comes from the endocrine system in the form of human growth hormone. It's hard to grow if you're not making more cells. Now, no one wants a bad copy. Avoiding mistakes is done through the use of the cell cycle checkpoints. The first checkpoint happens at the end of G1. During this checkpoint, the cell will make sure it has enough material to go forward to the next step, which would be DNA replication. It also checks the DNA for damage because we don't wanna make a copy of damaged DNA. If either of these conditions is not met for the cell, it'll stop its progression through the cell cycle and fix the problem or enter G0 until it gets the go ahead in the form of a cell signal. The next checkpoint happens at the end of G2. Here, cell size and protein reserves are assessed, and the copied DNA is given the once over to make sure that it copied properly. If there's a problem with the DNA, it gets repaired before we move on. The final checkpoint happens at the end of metaphase. Here, this check makes sure the microtubules are attached properly to each sister chromatid. If they're not, during anaphase, one of the cell copies would end up with too much or too little DNA. You and your roommate might end up with too much of each other's stuff, and that makes for a bad copy. Mitosis is halted until this step is completed. 
So each of these checkpoints is preventing disaster at the next step. Now, let's wrap up with a summary of everything you've learned. The cell cycle is split into G phases where the cell grows and gathers supplies, an S phase where it synthesizes a copy of its DNA, and an M phase where the cell divides. That M phase is mitosis, which is divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. During prophase, the DNA is condensed. During metaphase, it's lined up down the middle. And during anaphase, it's divided in half. During telophase and cytokinesis, these halves are surrounded by membrane to create two distinct identical cells. There are three checkpoints that make sure that cell division doesn't happen unless everything is ready for the next step. That's it for mitosis. Next time, we'll talk about another form of cell division called meiosis, which is the cell division related to reproductive processes. Stay tuned.